Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to another update on this Friday, finally Friday, January 12th, 2024. It is about 12.05 p.m. here, California time. Uh, latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D globe looks like a 1.2 into the region of uh, southern Nevada. Did see some activity stirring up overnight. We'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, I want to cover first the... Um, latest update here with uh, regards to the eruption potential across the Iceland area. Uh, the Icelandic Met Office has put out a new, <coughs> excuse me, update today uh, and they're chatting about the likelihood of an eruption at the uh, crater area. Haven't qu quite got that uh, pronunciation correct yet, so I will skip it. Uh, but it looks like um, they're forecasting or at least um, expecting an eruption within this zone here near the crater area uh, now specific location uh it's going to be let's see here let me go back and figure out where i was at <coughs> right here there we go uh right around in this area the southern edge here of that fissure activity that we've seen back in december right this is the lava flow northeast of hagafell this is the lava flow from the uh a previous fisher activity back in the middle of december last year 2023 goodness uh, so they're thinking somewhere around this crater area is going to be the likelihood of the uh, more fisher activity opening up that would put it further south here uh, closer to the grindavik area where, where they're still kind of building a barrier out here uh, to protect the town from any uh, potential lava flows or you know future lava lava flows here in this area uh, so we kind of watch that uh, and see how it plays out. They just happen to throw this wording in here. Uh, but far as the hazard map goes, now let's check this out. This is the latest hazard map uh, that was put out today for the region. It's a huge image. Let me bring this down just a tad bit so we can get a little bit better perspective. Oh, there we go. All right, so Grindavik still sits down here in the Zone 4 area, which is uh, it's got the potential, of course, for some earthquakes, fractures, lava flow, and fault movements. The main area, of course, up here in the red, Zone 2 and Zone 3. This is the area that could see the fissure activity open up, the eruptive fissure activity open up, with little to no warning. Still, Grindavik, right about here, north end of Grindavik, uh, sits very close to the Zone 2 and Zone 3. Uh, so we'll continue to watch that. All other areas out here, Zone 6, uh, potential lava flow. Zone 5, potential lava flow. Notice that uh, lava, that lava flowing down this way from the uh, December 21st uh, eruptive activity. And Zone 1 over here, uh, fractures and lava flow as well. So they're still thinking that the most likely source here of eruptive activity in the uh, fissure activity department is right around zone two and three so we'll continue to watch that uh, for some eruptive activity overnight earthquake activity around the iceland area well shows about 31 earthquakes a lot less than what we've seen here in the past couple days haven't really seen any major significant swarms elsewhere uh Grindavik area definitely showing some signs of some activity here today um, just northeast here and around that fisher area around the slingerfell and the hagafell region where uh, they're expecting that uh, eruptive fissure activity to occur at any time now. Uh, a look at the GPS measurements here. There we go. Uh, that's going to be this station right here in the Savart Singhi area. This is the four hour uh, detected charts. Uh, each dot they're representing uh, either uplift or deflation. And in this case, we're looking at the up trend here. Trend is up. Uh, that tells us that the inflation activity is continuing there in the Savart Singhi area. A matter of time here, folks, before we see that uh, potentially bust through the surface. I'm not for sure why it's taken so long because we are past the previous level of high inflation back, uh, back in 2023 in December, middle of December here, just about a month ago when we seen that fissure activity open up and uh, spew out uh, a little bit of lava there for a couple days so any day now i think we should see things uh kick back up continue to watch that see how it plays out 
Uh, this here is the Hawaii volcano, Kilauea volcano. USGS putting out a little article here a couple days ago and some today, but this map is fairly recent uh, from the 8th. Shows November 30th to about January 8th, 2024. Of uh, the satellite measured uplift here in the region of the uh, Kilauea volcano, which sits right up here. Uh, the earthquake activity has been confined to the South Caldera region. Uh, south of the caldera region into the southwest rift zone here. That's ex a little extension right here. There's a 1974 eruptive events. Uh, we also have been noting a little bit of earthquake activity in the last month or so around the east rift zone. And back over here, got some older lava flows from 1969, 1974. Looking at all the data, I'm tending to uh, think that this is going to be more of an activity event here across this older region of 19 1974 area um, somewhere south of the uh, summit region most of the erup eruptive activity has been confined well over the past couple eruptions here um, to the lava lake area it was back in 2018 that we've seen uh, some activity outside of that zone into the uh, Lanali Estates area uh, but for now, earthquake activity, very minimal. Not really seeing anything uh, major going on here. Just a couple earthquakes around the crater area of Kilauea Volcano. 2.0 and a 1.8 uh, major earthquake activity. Doesn't look like it. No major swarming. But we are still on the uptick in terms of inflation at the Hawaii Volcano there. Uh, are these guys having some issues again? Okay, kind of scared me for a second. <laughs> Let's see what we got here for inflation today across the Kilauea Volcano. A uh, little leveling off here in the last few hours, looks like, uh, but we're still somewhat, well, still very elevated. I can't say somewhat elevated. We are still very elevated in terms of inflation activity. Uh, the highest level of inflation seen at the Kilauea Volcano since the 2018 eruption. So things are still building. Um... It just keeps going up and up and up. Eventually, uh, that will not be the case. We'll see this thing definitely kick into gear. Uh, and again, I'm leaning towards the um, southwest rift zone around the 1974 vents uh, is where I'm thinking that activity is going to open up. Um, let's see here. What's going on with the... Uh, are we still live? We're live. Okay, scared me. See, when things like this stop working, it makes me think that I'm being attacked once again. Or, but uh, there we go. That's kind of odd. As soon as I do an update, things start going haywire. I can sit here for an hour or two looking at uh, earthquake information. As soon as I start going live, someone doesn't like it. Uh, all right. Latest informational statement here put out today from the USGS. The volcano is currently not erupting. Uh, and it's the same wording as always here. 14 small magnitude earthquakes recorded beneath the caldera. Um, but we'll continue to watch this, folks. Nothing major has changed here uh, for now. All right, let's uh, go back here to the USGS earthquake map. See if anything has changed overnight. Uh, of course, we did see some uh, larger scale movement up north here. Uh, just off the coast of Alaska. Uh, this earthquake south of Juneau area along the plate boundary. Uh, they have seen some larger scale movement out here uh, in the past. The 7.5, I remember looking at that on the uh, chart last night on the update. Uh, but it's been a few years since we've seen any large scale movement. 5.9, a decent earthquake. They did make an adjustment there to the depth of the earthquake. Uh, it was originally shallow, but uh, they've upgraded that to uh, looks like 20 kilometer depth for that earthquake. Historical data, obviously we see a lot of earthquake activity out here. Uh, it's been a little while though since we've seen any movement along this plate boundary between the North American and the Pacific Plate. Uh, but they can get some decent earthquakes here in this area. For now, 5.9. Uh, it doesn't look like we've seen any major adjustment down south. Um, a little bit of uptick. I've uh, been watching this, seeing if we're getting any migrational stress down here across the, the plate boundary. Uh, got small amount of earthquake activity here yesterday around Mount Rainier. That's not that um, too concerning. Bay Area, fairly quiet. A handful of smaller quakes out here today. Uh, a look at the 2.5 map and above. We did see 
two earthquakes here so far today. One up in Idaho, above 2.5, and one here, a 3.1 on the San Andreas Fault. Looks like that's on the creeping segment, very close to the creeping section of the San Andreas Fault. A little bit of activity stirring up there as well as we speak in the red circle. Uh, but really no major changes out here in terms of uh, swarming or significant activity. But we'll continue to watch that. Definitely showing uh, you know, a little bit of uptick here across the eastern edge of this uh, Pacific Plate Boundary. Way up north into uh, Montana, Whitehall, Montana. Looks like they had some activity um, this morning, 3.3. Little swarming activity occurring here. There's quite a few fault systems that run up through Montana. Uh, looks like they're having a little bit of aftershock activity as well near Whitehall. Near the, uh, uh, what is that? Tobacco? Tobacco? I'm not for sure how you uh, pronounce that correctly. Might be completely off on that. But there's uh, quite a few uh, mountain ranges, fault systems all over the place uh, for that earthquake activity uh, in that region. Let's see Yellowstone real quick. See if we... Uh, Got anything interesting going on here? There is the uh, six point or the uh, five point nine from yesterday up off the coast there of Alaska. Now that earthquake definitely looked like it was stronger than the five point nine, but uh, location wise, it's not. I mean, it, it's a distance, uh, but still a five point nine would show up uh, fairly nicely like this across the area not felt this was uh, just picked up on the seismograph stations here uh, the reading of the 5.9 and of course some s waves coming in following the primary wave signature there's a three-pointer up in montana local seismic activity here in these well-defined spikes and that is that uh, doesn't look like there's a whole lot of activity there at yellowstone but that three-pointer up in montana showed up fairly nicely there across a good portion of the stations Let's see, uh, not a whole lot else going on here. It didn't really show up there across the uh, Norris, uh, what's this, this Norris Museum. I don't know, I'm starting to believe some of these uh, seismograph stations that they call sheltered, that they claim are you know inside buildings and uh, outside, uh, well, away from the elements inside. So uh, I'm not for certain though that these are properly tuned because we can have activity out here across the park and some of these stations don't even pick up a little peep of a graph, you know, any type of a signature. So uh, I don't know. At least some of these stations are properly tuned. It looks like, uh, you know, the majority of them are, but we have a few that are not. Uh, and therefore it's unreliable to look at these stations here and say, well, no earthquakes today. When in fact, there is earthquake activity. Just uh, not on these ones that they call sheltered. All right. Uh, <clears throat> what else we got here across the area? Let's go back here to the USGS map and look at the large scale data. I know down here in the New Zealand area, I was looking at that on the Earthquake 3D globe here, showing uh, what looks like some earthquake activity. A couple three stirring up. Uh, Timothy Station here, the uh, New NewZealandQuakes.com site, showing the strongest earthquake here is a 4.1 earthquake. That's going to be up here along the Kermadec Trench. It's going to be this earthquake right here. Got New Zealand down south. Uh, most recent quake in this area looks like a 1.3 in the green uh, pinpoint there. A little bit of activity stirring up here across the region today of New Zealand. Uh, there's also uh, GeoNet servers out here that run the... Uh, data for new zealand they're showing roughly about the same thing a couple twos um mainly here across the north island area uh, just on that little tip aside from that doesn't look like anything major is going on there across new zealand for now uh, we'll check out the seismograph drums here and see what we have a handful of the smaller quakes there showing up on certain graphs and a little bit uh, a little bit down in south island but really there's not a whole lot here you know any area around the plate boundary is going to be almost always active right a lot of people hear about one earthquake in california well we have normally we have you know close to 100 earthquakes a day here across the plate boundary uh, and those are mostly smaller quakes but uh 
they do take place a lot anywhere along the plate boundary. If we were to have um, an option to view all these smaller uh, quakes across the plate boundary, you would see it looks somewhat similar to like this across California, but all along the plate boundary. EMS, <coughs> EMSC model, uh, it's hard to say. Sometimes they show some of the smaller quakes, but not often. Uh, but I don't think we want the, the uh, earthquake 3D globe cluttered like that. Too many quakes that occur, but yeah, a lot of people freak out when they hear, uh, wow, there was a three-pointer in California, but in fact, you know, we, we get uh, roughly around 100 earthquakes or so a day uh, across this area. Very small, too small to be felt, but they happen. All right, uh, getting off here, getting way off. Let's go back over to Japan, see what's going on here across the area so far today. Uh, 4.3 up in this little swarming area that's seen that uh, that large earthquake here. About Has it been over a week now? Let's see here, last seven days. I think it's been over a week. Back out here real quick. Yeah, it has, goodness. Time's just flying by. Uh, that was that seven-pointer, right? Seven... Ooh, what was it? 7.5. That's right. To start off the new year. Um, and still seeing earthquake activity out here in terms of aftershock movement. That's going to be the same area right here today. Quite a few fours uh, getting some activity further down south as well. Izu Trench seeing a super deep earthquake there. Uh, 4.5 at 400 kilometers deep. Subsequently, it looks like maybe a couple hours later we get uh, that 4.6 at the shallow regions here. Deeper activity triggering the shallow movement upstream. Definitely keep an eye on that. Uh, it has been, we have been seeing a little bit of shallow activity here across the area lately, including down here across the uh, northern Mariana Islands. Uh, this earthquake coming in yesterday for a five-pointer, but they did have uh, another earthquake or two within this region in the last week. Notice this shallow activity stirring things up out here uh, across the trench. Not a whole lot of deeper activity, but uh, we're definitely seeing some strain at the surface level. So we'll keep an eye uh, on this region for some further movement. Uh, down here across the Philippines, uh, looks like the latest activity here shows a 4.7 around the Philippine Trench. That was about 2 o'clock my time this morning. Um... But aside from that, the typical clustering going on out here across this plate boundary, threes and twos, and just a huge cluster always takes place in that area. I call it the crunch zone. That's where things uh, tend to compact and build. All the plates tend to want to uh, push up against this area here in a combined force. And that's why we're always seeing a lot more earthquake activity out here, a lot more earthquake activity across the Western Pacific compared to uh, areas out here along the eastern but they do move and we do get locked and uh, sometimes we do see big earthquakes uh alaska what do we got going on up here it looks a lot uh seeing a lot of deeper activity up here um a couple earthquakes up around the denali area maybe more than a couple looks like a good handful uh mostly twos and uh, some ones up there but uh, some of this activity stirring some deeper uh, there in the deeper regions uh, underneath Alaska lately. Uh, this one like 2.7 here, 140 kilometers deep. A couple other earthquakes there, 100 and, uh, 127 kilometers for that one. 140, like I mentioned, for this one. So we're getting some deeper activity around here. Keep an eye on the Alaska area. Um, yeah, this was just an odd quake here last night. Really haven't seen any uh, the only thing I've seen here in terms of interesting activity following that 5.9 is just further deeper movement up here across the Alaska area. So we'll keep an eye on it, uh, see if anything wants to be done here today in terms of uh, some potential movement. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Puerto Rico Trench, one little earthquake way out here uh, in the Puerto Rico Trench area. I think that was from last night if I remember right. Yeah, that was a 3.7. So most of the activity stirring up here across this area, southwestern edge of Puerto Rico. It's very common, very typical. That's been an ongoing thing for quite a while now, as far as that swarm goes. But not a whole, not a whole lot here around the Puerto Rico Trench or the subduction zones for now. Uh, let's see here across the Chile area and Peru region. 
Earthquake activity, 5 o'clock this morning, 5.3 into the Peru area. Uh, this is actually into the Peru Chile Trench down there, about 77 kilometers into that major subduction zone. You've got the uh, Nazca plate here um, being subducted underneath the South America region. This area does see quite a bit of large-scale movement. In fact, well, the largest earthquake ever recorded was down here. Uh, around the Chile area back in the 60s. Goodness, that was a big earthquake. Uh, but for now, just uh, some moderate activity. One earthquake down in the South Sandwich Trench from yesterday. That's a 4.8. Uh, I think this is from yesterday as well. Let me see. About 3 o'clock this morning, 5-pointer in the southern mid-Atlantic Ridge. Uh, let's see. This one from last night, pretty certain. That was that 5-pointer in the uh, Mediterranean Sea area. Today, in that region, definitely uh, looks a lot quieter. See that? Five-pointer indicating, or that red ring indicating the older movement. Not a whole lot uh, further movement in that area today. Uh, we did see what looks like a little bit of migration over here eastward uh, across the areas around the, um, it could be eastern Turkey area, maybe even Afghanistan region, it looks like. Uh, let's see exactly where that's at for that 4.1. From the EMSC, um, let's see here. Take a look at the world map. Now this one here shows all the smaller ones. See, that's a just a huge cluster. But I mean, if you want to see what's going on for a smaller activity, uh, then the EMSC is definitely a good choice for. Uh, you know, around the Mediterranean areas uh, to see some of that smaller earthquake activity. Here's that four-pointer up here in uh, uh, Russia. I guess it's way up there in Russia. Goodness. Uh, but either way, quite a bit of activity here across this region of Turkey along that plate boundary. Again, these are very small earthquakes, but they're, it's always moving. The plates are always moving. Even uh, at the micro levels, uh, you know, we see that activity stirring up daily. There's always earthquakes. Um, let's see what else we got. There's, there's the activity in uh, Afghanistan showing up here. Let's see, when was the last one? 4.1. That's way down here in Nepal. Across the Himalaya Mountains, 27 kilometers deep for that one. So, we'll just kind of watch it today. Um, it's definitely been active here over the last 24 hours. Somewhat of a, of an uptick. Uh, let's see what we got for space weather activity. Uh, a little bit lower today, it looks like, uh, down into the sea flare category. Uh, we're still popping a little bit. Uh, currently at a C1.6 solar flare. Uh, let's see what we got here for all these sunspots. Uh, the active regions here now just about the off the uh, western limb here. Uh, and to be honest, there's not a whole lot of potential with these sunspots that are currently facing the Earth. Maybe this area down here we'll want to watch. But uh, goodness, even this newer region that uh, really wasn't all that visible last night, uh, it is today here on the eastern limb, does not look super complex there. So we have uh, a few sunspots, but I don't see any major uh, potential for some stronger flaring. A 99% chance for a C flare, maybe an uh, M flare at 45% chance. Uh, they still have the X flare probability at 5, but not really seen it. Uh, and the Aurora forecast, well, we, uh, we don't have one yet. Very minimal conditions here in terms of the outlook uh, for the Auroras. Uh, Storm Prediction Center here today. Uh, limited into the uh, convective areas of um, today's severe weather potential. A slight risk uh, for tornado probability. Looks like about a 5% chance or so uh, in the area down across Alabama, Georgia, and maybe por uh, portions of Florida here as well. And that's for tornado potential, but also that 2% extends way up here as well. So just a heads up if you're in this area. Uh, wind potential as well. Not a huge threat for hail, but we do have a 5% chance zone here of seeing some large hail with those associated storms. Uh, but that's continuing to push eastward quickly. And uh, 
there is that system bringing uh, colder, snowier conditions wrapping around it, it looks like. Uh, that system's going to scoot out of here. California has our next. California has the next storm coming in as we head into the weekend. Decent precipitation uh, accumulation rates out here, but it's limited to the coast. Uh, I don't think we're going to see that type of activity into the valley, but we are going to see some rain at least, and that's from the GFS model. Uh, the ECMWF model shows roughly about the same. Uh, for that region at least we're getting some we're not completely rain shadowed uh, and then after that well more storm systems there it looks like across the west coast now that is decent if that does play out the GFS model uh, was shown a little bit less last night for California I want to see what the runs look like right now um, for the GFS model I don't know which one's more accurate I kind of lean towards the uh, the European model. They tend to pick a pattern, and it for for the most part it stays consistent. The GFS model tends to flip flop uh, all over the place, but it does look like we're going to enter into a wetter pattern there across the West Coast as we head uh, potentially into the end of this month. And um, yeah, so definitely. Uh, Look forward to some more rain. I'm, uh, it's it's cold out here, but uh, we don't have any rain or anything in Northern California. All right, uh, I think that's about it, folks. Friday, Friday, Friday. I don't know what I'm going to do today, but uh, it's Friday. I'll just say that. Hopefully, everyone has a safe and uh, happy Friday. And uh, make sure you guys, um, you know, just. Stay alert. Be prepared. There's a lot going on out here in the world right now. A lot of events. A lot of stuff I don't chat about here on this channel. I try to stick to just science-related stuff. And, uh, But yeah, there's definitely a lot going on in the world. Best thing to do is keep your eyes open, keep your ears open, and be on guard in these, uh, in these uncertain and crazy times. Um, all right. We're out of here. Have yourself a good day. We'll catch you guys back here for the nightly update. Take care, folks.